The surface you're writing on has been humanity's memory for 2,000 years. That notebook, the receipt in your pocket, the cardboard box in the corner. They're made from trees torn apart, fiber by fiber, then reassembled into sheets so thin you can see light through them, yet strong enough to carry knowledge across centuries. Here's what nobody tells you. Paper is wood rebuilt from scratch. Not sliced thin like veneer, but dissolved into individual fibers, then woven back together into an entirely new structure. Every sheet is millions of cellulose fibers, randomly tangled, held together by hydrogen bonds so weak that water breaks them instantly, yet so numerous that you can't tear the page. Why does newspaper yellow and crumble within years, while ancient manuscripts survive centuries? How did one invention in China overthrow empires by making knowledge too cheap to control? And what makes the difference between paper that lasts a thousand years and paper designed to fall apart in your hands? Let's explore the process. Paper begins as a living tree. Not the whole tree, but cellulose. Molecular chains that give wood its structure. These fibers are locked together with lignin, the glue holding wood rigid. But wood alone isn't paper. Too dense, too rigid. Fibers trapped in lignin, unable to bond. For most of human history, we wrote on animal skins, clay tablets, papyrus reeds. Writing was expensive. Knowledge belonged to the wealthy. Then around 105 CE, Chinese court official Kai Lun tried something revolutionary. He took tree bark, hemp, fishing nets, anything with plant fibers, soaked them until they fell apart, beat the mixture into pulp, spread it thin, let it dry. The result changed civilization. Cheap, flat surfaces for writing. Knowledge became affordable. But here's where it gets interesting. Kai Lun had discovered that if you separate cellulose fibers from lignin, soak them in water, then press them flat, the fibers form hydrogen bonds with each other. Millions of weak bonds create collective strength. Random tangle of fibers creates a sheet, flexible yet durable. This process, mechanical separation followed by hydrogen bonding, remained unchanged for 18 centuries. Then chemistry made it faster. Here's what happens inside a paper mill and why your cheap notebook yellows within months while archival paper lasts centuries. Modern papermaking starts with debarking logs. Bark contains no usable fiber. Massive drums tumble logs together, friction removing bark. Then they chip the wood into coin-sized pieces. These chips enter digesters, massive pressure cookers filled with chemical solution. At 170 degrees under pressure, chemicals dissolve lignin, freeing cellulose fibers. You probably think all paper is the same. Everyone does. But lignin content determines longevity. Remove all lignin and you get archival paper lasting centuries. Leave lignin in, and you get newsprint yellowing in months. The choice is economics. Removing lignin completely costs more. That's why your cheap notebook yellows. The manufacturer left lignin in to save money. Lignin reacts with oxygen and light, turning brown. You paid for it, watching your notes fade. The chemical pulp gets washed, bleached, and refined. Refining is critical. Machines beat the fibers, creating frayed ends. These frayed ends increase surface area, allowing more hydrogen bonds. More bonds mean stronger paper. The pulp, 99% water, 1% fiber, flows onto a moving mesh screen. Water drains through. Fibers remain, randomly tangled. As water leaves, fibers press closer. Hydrogen bonds form between adjacent fibers. But wait! Moisture content determines everything. Too wet, and fibers don't bond properly. Too dry, and paper becomes brittle. Modern mills use heated rollers, pressing and drying simultaneously. 
Each roller removes water, compresses fibers tighter, creates more bonds. Some paper needs additives. Sizing agents make it resist water. Without them, ink bleeds through. Fillers make it opaque. Brightness agents make paper whiter than natural fibers. The final paper emerges from giant rollers at 60 miles per hour. What was living tree is now engineered material. Fibers precisely arranged, bonding optimized, properties designed for specific use. Paper is simultaneously permanent and fragile. That contradiction defines its existence. Those hydrogen bonds holding fibers together are remarkably weak individually. Add water and they break instantly. Paper dissolves back into loose fibers exactly as it started. This is why paper recycles perfectly. You're just breaking and reforming the same bonds. But keep paper dry and millions of weak bonds collectively create surprising durability. Ancient manuscripts survive centuries because the bonds, though weak, don't break without cause. But here's the kicker. Paper's dominance isn't because it's the best writing surface. We've invented better ones, synthetic papers that never yellow, digital screens that never degrade. Paper dominates because it's the cheapest writing surface that works everywhere. No electricity, no special equipment, just fibers, water, and pressure. That simplicity is why paper survives the digital age. Every time you write a note, sign a document, or unwrap a package, you're trusting ancient Chinese wisdom refined by modern chemistry. You're trusting that someone understood how to break wood into fibers and let them bond back together. That notebook in your hand isn't just paper. It's precisely engineered fiber networks designed to last or cheapened with lignin. You can tell which by whether it yellows. So, that's surface carrying human knowledge for millennia. Paper isn't about trees anymore. It's about recognizing fiber engineering, the lignin removed or retained, the bonding optimized or compromised, the additives chosen for purpose. You see the hydrogen bonds now, not just the white surface. Maybe you'll choose acid-free paper for things that matter because you're someone who understands what permanence actually costs. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.